blood glucose monitoring skill which is one of the simple skill which I know in my nursing career but why did I fail for this what are the common errors am I doing in this particular skill is it a lancet that I don't know how to use it is it the blood glucose monitoring machine do I know how to switch on is the result not coming after putting the blood drop or is it timing out or what do I do with the lancet after pricking results is it 2.4 or 14.4 what do I do with the results where do I write it these are the common mistakes people do in their OSCE I am going to help you to identify these common errors which can help you to learn for your OSCE preparation I am Gilbert Martis from Health Skills Training we have a wonderful online learning platform for your OSCE learning please do not forget to comment and subscribe to our channel let's look at what are the common errors you come across in blood glucose monitoring first common error nurse is not picking up from the scenario where is your patient what do I need to do what's been completed your scenario is an important information tool where you need to read clearly and carefully and pick up what has already been done when it says pre-procedural checks and allergy has been completed people still go to the patient and do the ID check this station does not require ID check when it said pre-procedural checks allergy has been done if the scenario doesn't say that then you can do the ID check normally your scenario will say pre-procedural checks and allergies have been completed you don't require to do ID check guys you need to introduce yourself and give the consent but that is not ID check so you can directly go for a preparation into your treatment room and then go to the patient to do the procedure let's look at this how you can avoid it now number one here you have a scenario written read it carefully it says pre-procedural checks and ID check has been completed so next thing I need to do straight go for preparation there are other steps which you can come to our classroom training or register to our online OSCE learning HST learning online platform where you can watch and learn but I'm going to go through with the, the critical errors nurses are doing in this particular station now you have already got the information that pre-procedural checks and allergy has been completed go straight for preparation when you're doing preparation so you need to straight ask about your tray is the tray clean and ready to use if the examiner says clean and ready to use you don't need to use the clinical wipe and clean it again that error can be avoided and you can save time once the tray is clean and ready to use straight go to gather the items when you're gathering the item what are the items I need to gather what do I need to check first blood glucose monitoring the word itself tells you or the heading itself tells you so I need the monitor so what's the monitor so you get different types of blood glucose monitors but the functions are pretty much similar in this monitor this is on a cradle I would if I am you I would take it out from the cradle many times they don't give it in the cradle so I'm going to take it out first thing I need to do is switching on a lot of people don't switch on there is a switch on button sometime when you insert here it switches on by itself this particular monitor you have to press and hold and it switches on when it switches on what do I need to check people normally do this mistake you need to check the date is it in the current date any error codes you need to verbalize clearly to the examiner this machine is in working order today's date is visible I am happy to use so you can keep that in the tray and you can ask one more question examiner is it clean and ready to use yes then you can keep it in the tray number two 
so you can see here machine needs the strip so go with the strip so you pick up the strip with the strip common error people do one is not recognizing the date now if you look at this particular strip it's expired see it is expired in 2022 now you need to acknowledge that that this particular strip bottle has expired and then verbalize to the examiner see what the examiner response is if it response says you are the nurse you decide there might be another bottle with the correct date on it so you need to pick the right one so open the strip check it whether it is in good condition dry and clean verbalize that you can keep that in the tray now next thing is the lancet people are struggling to understand there are different types of lancet you might come across but the function is pretty much same where you need to expose the needle sometime might be needle within the lancet where you have to press the button to prick the finger now look at these different types of lancet now this lancet is very easy to use where you need to twist this particular bit and you expose the needle when you expose the needle you have to go to the finger and prick it by exposing you got to prick it even if it's a artificial finger once you prick it it needs to straight go to the sharp bin you cannot put it back into the tray that's a common error people do because it's a sharp it has to go to the straight to the sharp bit now number 2 lancet there are two different types of lancet you can get there is a button on top or button on the side please stay away from that button when you are twisting and opening this particular bit right some people keep the finger there and then they twist they don't realize that automatically i have pressed this button it is not of any use after you press it the spring action will go so what you need to do is you twist this i'm showing you it comes out and you can throw that into the clinical waste or you can keep that in the tray because this is not a sharp i'm going to keep that in the tray now i'm going to show you how to use it you need to use it says in the procedure third or fourth finger you have to use the side i'm going to show you you can see the hear the sound so it makes a sound when you press it that brings the needle out and goes into the finger where you can get a blood drop that's the lancet now this is a sharp this has to go into the sharp bin i'm going to put that in the sharp so you can get the button on top or on the side when you're twisting do not keep the finger on that so accidentally you can press all right another type you can get where you can have patient specific here you get needle like this where you open this part you insert the needle in there then you can close that then you can adjust there are numbers on top the bigger the number the deeper the needle will go let's say i've kept that four in here then you can pull it back and keep it ready which like a trigger now this particular button where it brings the needle out and pricks to the finger when you hold and press it you can hear the sound so that means it's pricking always when you're pressing press it hold nicely on the side of the finger and then press so that will prick the needle and bring it back so that means you can get the blood drop there now i'm going to walk you through this is about collecting the equipment when you're collecting you know how to use it this is a common error people to do please note when you're collecting equipment you know how to use them now i'm going to walk you through how to do this procedure avoiding the errors and what are these common errors you come across now first thing now i have collected the equipment i have got the blood glucose monitoring machine i have got the strip i have got the lancet i'm going to use this lancet which might be common or this lancet i'm going to take both of them i'm going to use only one for your procedure 
then I need a cotton swab which is critical to put it after the pricking and I have the sharp bin here which is critical as well to have it then I have got documentation paper I have to document whether it is pre-prandial or post-prandial pretty simple pre-prandial is pre-meal and post-prandial is post-meal post-meal is two hour after eating any food that is post-prandial where you need to document your blood sugar result now I'm going to go through with the procedure, I will need a pair of gloves. I need an apron. You can wear the apron straight away or you can take the apron with you. Either of that is acceptable. Now I've got all the equipments here. Right? I'm going to perform my hand hygiene. Following WHO hand hygiene technique, seven steps. Now I'm going to proceed to patient. Hello there, David. I'm Gilbert, one of the nurses in this hospital. I am here to do blood glucose monitoring for you. I just need to take a small amount of blood drop, which is normally used from your finger uh, of your arm. Is that okay to proceed, David? That is fine. Are you comfortable? Yes. Do you want me to close the curtains, David? Uh, no, that's fine. David, you can uh, lie down or sit down. What do you prefer? I'll sit. Okay, this is another common error people don't ask. Okay, sitting or lying down is important because some people can faint by looking at small blood drop. So that's why I give them an option. Do you want to sit down or lie down? Okay, David, now I'm going to just wear my gloves and prepare the equipment and then I'm going to walk you through the procedure. Is that okay? That's fine. Okay, I'm going to perform my hand hygiene. I'm going to wear my apron. I'm going to don clean gloves. So I'm going to ensure the machine is switched on, which I've already checked before collecting equipment it can time out please note this is another error people are not picking out it's similar like mobile phone you have left it alone it switches off screen is off it might not come on so you might need to press that back on or when you insert it it might come back on so i am going to insert and keep it ready or some of you might want to insert afterwards but either is fine Another common error people do is actually the blood glucose monitor strip. How do I insert? Which angle do I insert? People are inserting wrong way around. I'll give you an insight here. If you clearly look at any monitor strip for blood glucose monitoring, this has got chip end. This is similar like if you look at the mobile phone, the SIM card chip. That's how it looks. And on the top, this is where you insert the blood drop. I mean, in the sense, you put a blood drop in, it sucks in. So I'm going to insert this way, not that way around. So insert this strip right way around. When I insert, you can see it switches on if it is switched off before, making sure it is ready to take the blood drop. So that's what you see in the monitor. So I'm going to keep that ready my cotton is ready now next one is lancet that lancet i need to keep it ready now i'm going to twist it without holding that button i'm going to twist it and keep it ready i've not pressed it i can still keep it in the tray now i need to inspect the finger 
This is a common error as well where nurses are not inspecting the finger. What finger do I need to use? If you look at the marking criteria, it says third, fourth or fifth finger, which is little finger. Ideally, little finger is avoided as well, but do not use the thumb and the other finger. So use last three fingers. So let's say I'm going to pick the middle finger. Or right, when I pick the middle finger, so I need to inspect for cleanliness. Uh, is it clean? Number two, any calluses, any cuts, any bruises. I need to verbalize that. You do not require to clean the finger. You just verbalize. Assessor, I'm checking the finger. It is clean. There is no calluses, cuts. There is no redness or anything I could see. I am happy to use this finger. So you inspected the finger, then you're going to use the lancet and prick on the side of the finger. So I'm going to use pricking this. Make sure you prick it and make noises. One of the common error is people are not pricking the finger. If this type of lancet people are not opening, they are mimicking. You cannot mimic, you got to do it. It's a real environment, but simulation training, simulating the real environment. So you have to open it if this is the lancet and prick it on the side and say, I have pricked it and then I am going to throw it. So now this lancet, you can verbalize to the patient, say, I'm going to give a small prick. That is part of the procedure, but pricking, that's the most important people do error. So hold it tightly here, firmly, not too tight and press it. It makes noise and then directly into the sharp, not in the tray. That's the error can be happening. So directly into the sharp bin. Now, other thing is clearly says you are not allowed to squeeze the finger. Let the blood come by itself. So you hold it, it comes. Then if you look at my monitor has timed out. This is a common error. People are not picking up. What I do is simple is I'm going to take the strip out and push the strip back. It is switches back on. Wait for a couple of seconds. Now it's ready to take the blood drop. So I am going to take the blood drop. All right, assessor, I have got the blood drop. Now, because it's an artificial finger, it does not give you the blood drop. What happens in the exam situation, they will keep a blood drop in a little bottle. It can be eye drop medication bottle. So you can clearly see there is a blood drop here. Now I am going to put a blood drop. It's better to do it on the tray, not outside. It's safe, it's comfortable. I'm going to put a little blood drop. When you put the blood drop, you get either a result. If you get a result, it's fine because the artificial blood prepared. Sometimes common error is you do not get a result. If you get a result, it's fine. Whatever result you get, let's say 14.4 is high and 2.4 is low. Normal blood glucose is 4 to 7 millimole per liter. We use millimole here four to seven. Let's say you didn't get the result, but you did everything perfect. You need to verbalize that to the examiner. Examiner, I put the blood drop, but there's no result has come. So can I have the result, please? They will give you the result. But in this situation, let's say you got the result 2.4. 2.4 is low. Don't suddenly panic and uh, create a panic in the patient as well. 2.4 it's low, but you need to explain. So now he's, you got the result 2.4. So straight away, you need to put a cotton. Don't forget to put a cotton. That can be a common error. People are forgetting the cotton. You can ask the patient, are you on any blood thinner medication where you need to put more pressure on? Or you can ask the patient to hold on. Okay, can you hold that for me, Robert? Yep. All right. Is it okay to call you Robert or David? Uh, Robert. Okay. So I've just asked you to hold that cotton for me. Please hold that. So now I am going to, um, you know, take my strip out. Where do I throw this strip? People think that it's a sharp 
this is not a sharp you can throw this into the clinical waste bin so i'm going to throw this in the clinical waste bin i'm going to throw all the other things which are not sharp these are ends you can throw i'm going to take my gloves off i am going to take my apron off without touching my clothes i'm going to perform my hand hygiene now important is documentation before you forget the value so you have to document the result in pre mail or post mail if you're not asked the patient before this is the right time to ask do not worry that you have not asked this is very giving you prompting all right now robert okay so did you have anything to eat today no so that clearly tells me he has not that's the right way to ask all right have you had anything to eat so patient said no that is clearly a pre meal the patient says i had something to eat now your time of procedure is 10 am and then patient says i had a breakfast at 9 o'clock 9 o'clock is only 1 hour after the something eaten is still pre meal let's say i had a breakfast at 8 o'clock now time is 10 o'clock is 2 hours since he had the breakfast it is post meal now my patient said i have not had anything to eat i am going to document 2.4 millimoles per liter i am going to put time which is my time is 10 date today's date your exam date is the date you have to put your scenario says assume it is today time now is so i'm going to put a date and i'm going to put my signature so i got the results here i am going to now go to the patient this is critical as well what do you say to the patient now you could have said straight away when you got the result all right david your blood glucose is 2.4 i am going to inform my nurse in charge i'm going to document it i am going to give you something to eat or drink to bring the blood sugar up keep it simple when you are explaining david your blood glucose is 2.4 i'm going to inform the nurse in charge i am going to document it i'm going to give you something to eat or drink to bring the blood sugar up so um is that okay david that is immediately before you taken the gloves and apron off you can say yeah or you can document it and then go to the patient you can say it. there are two times you get an alert for yourself to explain the result your blood sugar is 2.4 same thing you can repeat what i said before if you're not said it so only once is enough if the blood glucose result is 14.4 pre meal or post meal i am going to document it inform the nurse in charge i am going to monitor the results carefully and then i am going to check any medications are due to be given so i've done everything assessor now i am going to clean the monitor i'm going to store it back so this is blood drop you can leave it there i am going to clean the glucometer strip bottle and leave it for next use there are other strips are there which are not used I am going to clean the tray and leave it for next use. I'm going to leave the call bell in reach if it is a hospital or outpatient department. I'm going to do my final hand hygiene. And then I am going to leave. So this video I'm sure that helped you to identify the common errors that you come across in this particular skill. please do not forget to subscribe to our videos and let us know what you want to see next this is gilbert martis from health skills training